Let's get reaction now from the chairman of two major House committees looking into all this. Trey Gowdy is chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and Bob Goodlatte chairs the House Judiciary Committee. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, chairman Gowdy, first to you, just a broad overview. What strikes you about this report? What's hit you, hit you when you look at the 568 pages? Just what a dark day it is for the FBI and the DOJ, two institutions our country desperately needs. We desperately have to be able to have confidence in them. And this level of bias and animus, uh, not only did he want to stop the Trump campaign, he wanted to stop the Trump presidency. This You're is an FBI. Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok, the, the FBI agent who was on Hillary Clinton's investigation and arguably the lead Russia investigator, not only wanted to stop his campaign, but once he won, got on the Mueller probe because he wanted to impeach him. That is a level of animus and bias that, that everyone should reject. And, and, and Chris Ray, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Chris, there are consequences. The consequences are that your fellow citizens question whether or not they can have confidence in the world's premier law enforcement agency. And that's coming from somebody who's defended him a lot throughout his career. This was a bitterly disappointing report. Chairman Goodlatte. Well, first of all, this report shows that there was special treatment given to Hillary Clinton in the investigation of her case. There are there is not uh, standard procedures followed in investigating her, uh, and there was special treatment given. There's no doubt that this was not proper process, and the report shows time and time again how Director Comey and others made mis uh, mistakes, errors in judgment, or deliberate. People can draw their own conclusions, but it was improperly handled. And as Trey said, you then put that up against how the investigation has been handled into the so-called Trump-Russia collusion, and you have a contrast that is shocking in terms of uh, how they handled one presidential campaign compared to another. It's got to be investigated further. Uh, changes have got to be made. I will compliment uh, Director Ray on some of the personnel changes that have been made. I will compliment him on saying that there are sobering lessons learned from this. We need to see changes made so in 2020 we don't see another president campaign handled like this. So when you hear Republicans and people who've been looking into this and say this 568 pages is there's just not a lot there or that Horowitz kind of left something on the table uh, how do you respond to that? This is a very thorough investigation he takes uh, minutia and examines each piece carefully draws his conclusions, and I commend him. I think it's a, uh, a well-done report. Now, I never expected he would, would, would find every single thing, as some critics have said, but he did find all kinds of irregularities here. When you couple that with the, the, the struck page text, uh, including this new one that has come out recently, where part of it was redacted, by the way, we only recently learned the whole sentence about the how part. he was going to stop yeah. uh, Donald Trump from being president of the United States. That is improper for the FBI. And quite frankly, this is the world's premier law enforcement organization, and it's besmirching the reputation of tens of thousands of brave men and women who keep us safe, prevent terrorist attacks, fight crime every single day, and a handful of people in the hierarchy of the organization have caused serious damage. All right, let's put up the August 8th, 2016. That is the one where Page says Trump's never going to be president, right, right, and struck Texas text back. That part was redacted in the documents you received. No, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Here's another part that uh, we believe in November 22nd, 2016, FBI Attorney One, is it making you rethink your commitment to the Trump administration? We think that's Lisa Page. Attorney Two, hell no, viva la resistance. Uh, and we believe that's Peter Strzok. Um, let me play this soundbite. Uh, Congressman Gowdy, from uh, Jim Comey in his interview here in Special Report, I asked about these struck t uh, page texts and if he knew now what he knew then, what would he would do? I'd have removed both of them from any contact with significant investigations. So shouldn't there work including, from... Including those involving anybody connected to President Trump, but beyond that. Because so it's just shouldn't such their poor work judgment. product then be questioned? Sure, it's a reasonable question to okay, ask. So they Peter were bad-mouthing everybody, including pre the candidate Trump. So which Peter is Strzok interviews Hillary Clinton, deals with the, the bleach bit and the server and Cheryl Mills, all of that, interviews Michael Flynn, 
and is integral in this whole case. But he's one of many other people involved in all the things you just ticked off. When I saw the, the text, I was deeply disappointed in them, but I never saw any bias. Any bias. Well, he's not reading the same text I'm reading. I mean, uh, Peter Strzok said that the vote should be 100 million to zero. He can't think of a single solitary American that should vote for Donald Trump to be president. He said he'll stop it as a candidate. He talked about impeachment once he won. Um, actually, Director Comey unwittingly just proved the point of the question you asked him on follow-up. Would you have kept him on the investigation had you known what you know now? And he said no. Okay, why not? Because bias is that insidious, that is that pervasive. It, it colors your ability to do what we need the FBI to do, which is to be fair and fact-centric. So, of course, you're going to fire him the day you learn. In my head, I go back, when did you start working on the case? That's when you should have been fired. So, whatever he did on either of these investigations, Brett, I mean, it, is, it, it has to be viewed through the prism that he can't think of a single solitary person that should vote for this man to be president. So Strzok's attorney says this is taken out of context. It didn't affect his decisions. Uh, some people say what happens in the context of those texts? Did, did they know something about the Russia information? And that's what they're referring to. Do you think that this changes at all in context or in a vacuum? It's, it's just damning. Um, it changes a lot going forward because I don't know how my fellow citizens are going to be able to have confidence. I mean, Russia did something to our country in 2016. It was serious. It deserved to be investigated. It deserved to be investigated by a fair FBI agent who was not talking about impeaching the person that he was investigating. Uh, his lawyer is just wrong. That bias did impact something. He was so hyper-focused on Trump that he ignored the Wiener Abedin emails, and it caused Jim Comey to have to send a letter a month later than he should have sent it. The other point, Brett, is this. Why is it our job to prove that Strzok's bias impacted his decision-making? I got a better idea. Strzok, you come before Congress, you come before the American public and prove to us that your manifest animus towards Donald Trump did not affect your decisions. Let me ask one more question. On this. Hold on one second, Mr. What Trey okay, just said, because Trey is exactly right. Uh, we have been uh, requesting that he be produced as witness for quite some time now, uh, and if uh, that agreement is not reached, we are very shortly going to issue a subpoena for him to appear. Speaking of that, there's also documents that you want that you still haven't received. I mean, this process has been we going on. We have set up a better process. We're making progress. We actually have uh, a room down at the Department of Justice where they are producing tens of thousands of documents, and our investigators are going through those, identifying the ones that we want produced. They are producing them. Uh, so we're making progress in that regard, but we also have other documents they have not produced, uh, and that we're making progress on that. We have meetings coming up shortly on how to get those additional documents requested produced. This is the American people right to know. The Congress is their representatives. These documents have got to be produced. There is no reason not to produce them. Chairman Gowdy, the last time you, you talked about the FBI inner workings, it, it was about this allegation of Spygate and, and all of that. You said at the time that you thought that the president and others would think that the FBI was doing what they were supposed to be doing. In context of this, and, and you're, you're animated about what you're learning out of this IG report, does it change your perspective of how this has all progressed, even when it comes to the Russia investigation? Brett, I'm animated because uh, Russia tried to uh, undermine the fundamentals of our democracy in 2016. And I think anyone who heard what any law enforcement agency heard in the summer of 2016, every one of my fellow citizens would say, you go find out whether that's true or not. You go find out whether or not a foreign hostile country is going to mess with our election. What my fellow citizens also expect is for the agent that does the follow-up to be free of taint and bias, like 99% of the FBI agents are. It just so happened the one picked to follow up and leave the Russia investigation has manifest animus and can't think of a single person to vote for Donald Trump. So those two are inextricably intertwined. Most of my fellow citizens would say, yeah, I want to know what Russia was doing to us in 2016, but I also want the person that's finding out, that's investigating it, to be free of bias and free of taint. And they would say Mueller fired that guy. 
uh, he did fire him. Um, and, um, and God only knows what damage he was done before Mueller fired him. This is what's so pervasive about bias, Brett. It doesn't matter what Mueller comes up with. Some people are going to believe because Strzok's level of animus was so high that you can't remove the taint. That, that's why bias is so destructive in a justice system. Chairman Goodlatte, this is what I hear on email, on Twitter, on Facebook. They hear us reporting on these 568 pages. They've been waiting for months and months and months. And they hear what is coming out of it. Who is going to pay for something that was done wrong in their mind? And investigation after investigation, it seems like it comes to a, a head and then nothing happens. Absolutely. Uh, hundreds of classified emails uh, were uh, handled improperly in violation of the law and no one has been held accountable in that regard. Now we, ha now we see that that whole process of that investigation was handled with extreme bias and a whole host of questionable actions, and people need to be held accountable. Some of those people are no longer employed at the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Justice. That's a good thing. But we're going to continue to follow through until we're sure that changes have been made so that these things can't occur in the future, and we don't have a 2020 that looks anything at all like 2016 in terms of uh, this kind of uh, uh, mishandling of uh, investigations of uh, the highest level of importance when you're talking about the two candidates for president of the United States. So uh, Trey and I are going to have a joint hearing next Tuesday uh, where we'll have the inspector